الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنهجينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى قياس a lot of creation if we start counting the creations that he the, the number of creations the type of creations that he has made we will never be able to count that just imagine the the, the type of animals the type of insects the type of reptiles the type of uh, the animals of the sea all of these different types of uh, creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean they are enormous in number but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of all of the creatures that he has made there are two that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has has given some or maybe I would say three that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given some special value one of them is the angels and angels are a very blessed creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the angels that these are the creation that لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون that whenever something is said to them that they do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even an iota and they do whatever is commanded to them so angels are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all and they are not put into any sort of test but then there are two more creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are the jinns and the human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them for a very special purpose and that special purpose is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test them both of them and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to put them either into paradise or the hellfire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created men and jinn except that they worship me. That's the sole purpose of the creation of the jinns and the human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a lot of honor to the human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ that I have given, indeed I have given a lot of honor to the human beings, to the children of Adam. So when a human being is born, when a small little child, this child has a lot of need, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again remind us that you know there was a time that you were a child and you were nothing right I mean if we have children we know that when they were born how how the children are like all of us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Hal ata alil insani hinu min al-dahri lam yakun shayyam that hasn't there 
hasn't there come a time upon humankind when he wasn't he was nothing even to be mentioned that was the value of the human being that nobody talks about a small little child in the whole world right allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshajin nabtalihi faj'alnahu sami'an basira that indeed we created human being from uh, from a uh, from a uh, uh, from a drop and then we will test him and we have made him a, a somebody who can hear and who can see so when a child little child is born he's not even able to move by himself or herself right so now when this child becomes an adult he has two ways that he can choose and one is that he can choose the way of righteousness and the second is that he can choose the way of sins right and the way of righteousness is the is the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way of sins is the path of shaitan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people who follow the path of path of sins is like as if they are worshiping worshiping shaitan أَلَمْ أَحَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ مُبِينٌ That, O oh, children of Adam, didn't I, didn't I take a promise from you that you will not worship shaitan? He is indeed your open enemy. Right? وَأَنِ اعْبُدُونِي هَذَا سِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ And you worship me, that's the right path, that's the straight path. Right? So, Everybody, when a child is 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 becomes an adult, that he can choose either the the path of righteousness or the path of sins. In other words, he can have three types of lives. Either he can have an, an animalistic life, or he can have a, a quote unquote human life, or he can have a life of iman. What is this animalistic life? So again, if you look at a child, a, what a child does is, like, all what he does is, you know, eat, drink, sleep, and relieve himself. That's all what the child does. Okay. All what the child does is, whenever he is to, uh, he is hungry, he starts crying. Right? And the mother, she hears the child crying. She knows what's what's happening, right? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created such a perfect system that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala provides the child from within the mother, Subhanallah. And it it can come as soon as the child wants it. The milk comes. This is a beautiful system that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created. Right. So child doesn't even have to think about where my food is going to come. All what he has to do is cry. Whenever he has to rel relieve himself, you know, I mean nowadays there are people that kids wear diapers. When they, when they relieve themselves, they start crying. What's happening? You know, I need to get my diaper changed. Right. So all that they need to do is cry. Right. And all of their needs are fulfilled. But their needs are what? Their needs are they have to drink, they have to eat. They have to relieve themselves and then they're sleeping. And when they grow a little older, all what they do is, you know, just play around. And if we really look into the life of a child, this is exactly what the animals do. This is exactly what the animals do. Animals also eat. Animals drink. Animals, like, sleep whenever they feel like. Whenever, and if, if they don't have anything to do, you go and, like, if you go to a zoo, for example, or have, go to a safari, you will see them in the, either they are playing with each other. That's all what an animal does. That's it. Right? They don't do anything. When this child grows a little older, there is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates within a child, which is the desire of, of the opposite gender. So, I mean... If he is a person of righteousness, of course he or she gets married and, and, and fulfills that desire in, in whatever shape or form. And this is exactly what an animal does. They also have this desire within themselves. And, and whenever they have to fulfill that desire, they fulfill that desire. 
right? But if you compare a human being with an animal, we will see that animals do far better than all of these things that, that we, are, we have just spoken about. You know, if we are hungry, I mean, all what we can eat is like what? A little bit of rice, maybe a little bit of bread, a little bit of pasta, a little bit of pizza, whatever, right? Whatever you like. A little bit of biryani. You know, once I was extremely hungry, I didn't eat like for the whole day. And I, I, I went to one of my friend's house. Uh, I was traveling. And I said, you know, I'm extremely hungry. You know, I so that person said, okay, it's food is ready, come on. And when I sat there to eat, I just ate a little bit. That's all what my appetite is in any way. Right? So he said, you know, you were saying you were, you were very hungry. He said, but my stomach is this much. Right? It can only take this much. This is what a human being does. So they, they have only a, a, a limit, they have some limitation that they eat. Right? And if you compare it with, with the animals, when they start eating, they can eat a, like a, a lion can eat the whole goat. This is what the this is what an animal does, right? Just just like lion, elephants, crocodiles. Look at all of these animals. The amount of the food that they take in a day, I think it will take an, a human being to to eat all of that in a month, right? If you have to compare like uh, that that the, the 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 human beings play with each other. Like they have all these Olympics and they have uh, uh, this 100 meter sprint and 200 meter sprint and all of that, right? They can only run. The, I mean, look at the world records. I mean, they're not they're not very very fast. But you've com if you compare them with a few animals, for example, a cheetah, right? The speed that it runs with is enormous. So even like playing and and walking around and running around. The animals they, they they supersede the human beings. If you look into the the opposite gender relations between a husband and a wife, right? How many times a, a husband and wife and wife meet with each other? Very limited, right? Look at animals; they meet several times a day. So if they have to look into the desires, they have far more greater desire the, for the opposite gender as well. So human beings are nothing compared to animals if we have to compare them with these things. Right. If you have to say, you know, the, that you know, you're very intellectual and you know, mashallah, look at all the structures that we have made, look at this Burj Khalifa that we have made in the tallest hour in the in the world. Look at the bees. The the, the, the perfection of their houses are so great. That you know, and they don't have anything. They don't even put anything on the paper. They they start from one end, and the and, and the other group of bees start from another end, and they start building, and they meet in in the middle with perfection. Where it's all coming from? We can't even compare with animals. And if you have to say, you know, we are very intellectual and we build beautiful houses and beautiful buildings. So all of these things are animalistic, but the matter of fact is that if we have to remain animalistic, the animals are far better than us. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that people of heedlessness, people who are heedless of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, they are ulaika kal an'am. They are like animals, they are like cattle. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are not only like cattle, bal hum adal. They are even worse than cattle. They're even worse than animals. Because animals were only given these things. They had this desire to eat, to drink, to reproduce, right? To do all of these things. Right? And this this was the only thing that was given to them and they are doing it to perfection. And you were given something better, which was your intellect. Right? And you are not using that intellect that you were given and you are trying to become like an animal and animals are far better than you than in, in all of these, these in all of these things right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given these things to us with number one is nafs so when a person is like a kid is small right or even if they grow old and they don't use that intellect that they don't use that the, the 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 message that has been given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
right? This is exactly what they do. They follow their nafs. They follow their nafs, right? So this is the animalistic life. This is the animalistic life. The second type of life which I said quote unquote a human life, human life is when a kid grows older and they start using their intellect a little bit, right? Which is the second blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given people. When that when he starts using that intellect then he gets he gets two qualities. One quality is that he starts he ha he create there's a quality that is created within himself which is to 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 love the beautiful things, right? So he starts putting perfection in everything. It's not only like he, he likes other other people. He likes, for example, he, he builds beautiful houses. That's something that 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 uh, that comes within him, right? For example, he builds beautiful clothes. He likes to wear beautiful clothes. That's a beauty. That's a something that gets created within him, right? Then he likes to. Uh, eat good good food, right? For example, that's kind of a beauty that he starts liking. So this is number one thing that he likes. For example, I mean, all of us. For example, if we we like to eat biryani, right, or whatever pizza, and say if somebody brings to you a snake, right, you will not like it. You want it to be taken away, right? There might be some people who like to eat snakes, but we will not like it, right, because it's not in our nature. So every human being has something with developed within him, which is to 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 love sort of beautiful things or some sort of things. This is one thing that gets developed within him when he starts using that intellect. And the second thing that gets created within him is that he starts becoming social. He starts becoming a social person. He wants to be with people. He wants to 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 meet with people and even when he wants to do things for people right then what happens is that he wants that he either he gets something back from these people right because he is a social animal now right he does things for people and at least worse come towards he'll say you know the other person says thank you to me right so these kind of qualities gets developed within people right which is better than the animalistic life because now he is living like a human being right human beings are better than animals so he's better than the animalistic life but still there is something that can be improved and that is the life of iman that is the life of iman and that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from all of us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that you know that the life that you live it should be according to the commandments that I have given you. That's the demand from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want animalistic life from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't even like, uh, like so-called quote-unquote human life, which is based out of intellect. Because this intellect that we have been given, it has a limit. It is a limit. It can only think to a certain extent. If you look at the laws of the certain countries, Right? They they say that you know homosexuality is Allah, for example. Auzubillah. Why is that? Because that's what their intellect is thinking. They think that you know it's very natural for a person of the same gender of uh, to to have uh, to have feelings for in his heart for the person of the same gender. Stupid, right? That's what we say because we have been given guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the thing is that's how intellect thinks. Intellect has boundaries. And that's all these systems that we make based out of intellect. Right? This system and that system, you know, people who have studied science, we have all of these systems, right? But they are systems. They're just models. They're only models. And if you look into the model that was there like say fifty years ago, People come later, scientists, and they refute that model because that's what they thought through their intellect. And people down the road, they've thought that their intellect wasn't thinking properly and that was wrong and this is the right thing to do. Right? So intellect has also limits. And that is the reason when people base their lives out of intellect, although that's better than the animalistic life, but still that's not perfect. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that we live a life according to what we have been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the life of Iman. That's the life of belief. And belief is something that, that's coming from Allah through revelation. Through revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down messengers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that whatever these messengers have brought to us, we follow that. That's the demand from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the test. That's our test. That is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from the men and the and the jinns. From the human beings and the jinns. Right? And when and just take an example what I gave for the for this for the human life, for example, that people become social with each other, right? They want to be with, with each other. They even want to help each other. But then at the end of the day, they're helping other people because they are selfish. They need something from that other person. Either, as I said, words come to words, they will want to thank you, right? Or they will be thinking, you know, I'm helping them today, possibly will help me tomorrow. Right? Some sort of thinking is going at, his, at the back of his mind, right? This is why I'm doing this. But when you put the Imani flavor on top, what happens? Then there, that selfishness, selfishness is gone. That's what the Anbiya alayhim used to tell the people, right, in the Quran, right? Ya qawmi la as'alukum alayhi ajra. Oh my nation, I do not need any reward from you for what I'm telling you, right? In ajriya illa ala ladhi fatarani. That all my reward is to the one who has created me. That's the Imani flavor on top of the human flavor. That makes a person, that person a person of Iman. That gives him like that, that extra touch, the extra quality. And this is the quality, the Imani quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from all of us. Right? So now the, the heart that we all have, that becomes the heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That becomes the heart which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran as the sound heart. Aqalbun Salim. Right? When this this heart gets that imani flavor, that sprinkle of iman on top of this this human quality that he has. Right? So this imani quality, the imani life, the the, the, the life of belief, this the imani flavor, it has four qualities. And that's described in one of the beautiful hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said that man ahabba lillahi wa abghada lillahi wa a'ta lillahi wa mana'a lillahi faqad istakmal al-iman. That whoever loved for the sake of Allah, whoever had anger for has anger for the sake of Allah, and who gave for the sake of Allah, and who withheld for the sake of Allah, he has indeed perfected his Iman. He has indeed perfected his Iman. What a beautiful hadith. So if we have to put that Imani flavor on top of our human life, this is what we need to do. مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضَ لِلَّهِ وَأَعْطَ لِلَّهِ وَمَنَعَ لِلَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَكْمَلَ الْإِيمَانِ he has perfected his religion. What does it mean by loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? Al-hubbu fillah. Right? That people love other people for the sake of Allah. People love other people for the sake of Allah. The only reason that they love other people is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy if I love that other person. Right? For example, loving your parents loving your husbands, loving your wives, loving your children, loving your teachers. Right? All of that is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Right? So this is when you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah, that is, the, that is from the flavors of Iman that you put on your life. We know from like when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated from Makkah Mukarramah to Madinah Munawwarah, what happened? Allahu Akbar. 
I mean, the love that these people showed to each other, that we cannot even find that in, 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 in the whole human history. SubhanAllah. These people, Prophet ﷺ said that all the people who are migrating were muhajirun. He said that and all the people who were there in Medina Manawara and they were called Ansar, the helpers, right? He made one person a brother of another person. So he made pairs. You know, you are the brother of this person. And these people, because that brotherhood, this love was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they went even beyond what they could have, like, the, the, what they would have loved their own actual blood brother. You know, Sahabi is coming. I said, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf is coming for his, to his, 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 his brother, like, again, Islam, that he was made. By, by the Prophet ﷺ. He's saying, you know, I'm very wealthy. This, this, uh, the person who is in Medina Munawwara, the Ansari Sahabi, he's saying, you know, I'm very wealthy. You are my brother for the sake of Allah. You know, you take half of my wealth. Say, I have a million dollars, you take like 500,000. Allah Akbar. Can anybody do that? Even if you're like billion, you will never be able to give like whatever is the half of that, I don't even know what's the half of a billion. <laughs> right? Can anybody do that? No? Not that. He said, I have two wives, I give divorce to one of my wife, and you marry my wife. Allah Akbar. What a sacrifice. This was the kind of love that they had for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this Sahabi, May Allah be pleased with all of them. He said, you know, I don't need any of your things. All what you, you, I want from you is you let me know where is the market. And I'll go to the market, I'll start a business, and inshallah Allah will put barakah in my business. And that's what he did. But that's the, uh, that's the other part of the story. But the thing is that the love that they had for each other. We can't even imagine... Uh, even if we start reflecting on that, we will not be able to properly reflect the love that they had for each other. SubhanAllah. Right? This must be an amazing love. And because they did all of that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they wanted their reward from Allah. That Sahabi didn't ask that Sahabi, you know what, that, that I want to do this because, you know, so that you'll be grateful to me. No. I don't need any reward from you, whatsoever. In the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiyallahu an, there was a list w with them that had the names of all the people who were in need. Like the widows, orphans, all of these kind of poor people. And, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu and he said, you know, I want Sahaba who can come and take care of one of these people. And people came and they put their names in front of, you know, I'll take care of this person, I'll take care of this person, I'll take care of this person. Sayyidina Umar came and he saw the list and he saw there is a widow's, widow's name in there. And he said, you know, I'll take care of this widow, but I'm not going to put my name in there because I want to get all my reward from Allah. I'm not even going to mention that I'm going to help her. But there's no name in front, so I'll just take her, not even tell Sayyidina Abu Bakr, go and help her out. Sayyidina Umar goes in the morning after Fajr, after praying Fajr, goes to this widow's place. She, he can knock, knock, who is there? Omar, what do you want? You know, I, I want to help you out, to cook your food, to clean your house, all of that. You're an old lady, so I thought maybe I'll just help you. So she said, you know, you know, all my things I have been taken care of. Thank you very much, you can go. I was amazed. There was no name in front of her name. What happened? Who was that person? Okay. Next morning he thought, you know, I'll go even a little early. He said, you know, let me go like before Fajr. He goes before Fajr. Knock, knock, who is there? You know, same person, what do you want? I want to help you out. Thank you very much, everything has been taken care of. He was amazed. He said, you know, let me see who, what's happening. 
So the next day he stayed there all night in the dark. He was hiding behind something so that you know he can see what's happening, what's the matter. And suddenly right after the middle of the night he heard somebody walking. And he didn't even have shoes on. Right? Barefooted. And this person is going, you know, very quietly and you know goes near the widow's place and say that Umar calls him. Hey, who are you? Salaam alaikum. And this person, you know, is all covered up, barefooted. So when Sayyidina Umar called him, who are you? He turned. What he saw was he was Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Sayyidina Amir al the leader of the believers, the king. What are you doing here? You know, I just uh, thought I'll, I'm, going, I'm going to help this lady out. Why didn't you put your name on the list? So that I, people don't real people don't know that this was that this is me who is who is helping this widow out. This was the love that they had for the for their for their fellow Muslims. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Not to get any reward from anybody. This is the Imani flavor that they had on their lives. Imam Zainul Abidin Rahmatullah Alayh He was a very beautiful man Like strong built He was also uh, Like he was a leader Right he was Amir al-Mu'mineen When he died When he passed away And some the person who gave him Who washed his dead body You know he saw that there is a mark On his shoulder there's a mark, a black mark on his shoulder. And nobody could real, like, realize that why is this black mark on his shoulder. And only after a few days somebody came in, again a widow or an orphan, they said, you know, every single morning somebody used to come and put food in, in, uh, uh, in front of my house. And since Imam Zayn al-Abideen has passed away, nobody's putting that food. So then everybody realized that it must be him. And that is because of carrying that load on his shoulder, that mark was because of that. Not only that person, but many, many people possibly that he was helping out. SubhanAllah, Amir al mumini And not even letting anybody know that they are helping them out. Sayyidina Umar, in his time of when he was a caliph, and his, his sunnah was that he used to go out and see what's happening in the city at night. You know, he used to become like a common person and used to go out and see you know, if there is anybody in need so that he can help those people out. Once he was... <laughs> he went out at night and just came out of the... came out of Medina Manawbara, out of where the... like where the, where the city kind of ended. And he saw that there is a tent. And that, and there was a, a Bedouin who was, he was a traveler, and they used to carry their tents, so that if there's night, they could put their tents and, and sleep at night. And he saw that there is a Bedouin who was sitting outside the, that tent, and he was crying. And so, you know, Omar went to him and said, what happened, why are you crying? He said, I'm a traveler, I was just passing by, and my wife is pregnant, and she is having, uh, uh, she's about to deliver and she's having pain. Right? I'm crying, I don't even know anybody. And Sayyidina Umar, of course, who he was, radiallahu an, he went running, went to his house, asked his wife, you know, come on, somebody's in need. Also put the, like, took the, all the things to, to prepare food, brought that together, like, brought, brought that along with them, asked his wife, you know, you go in, inside the tent, help the, Help the lady out, and he start, started preparing the food outside the tent. <clears throat> so this person asked him, you know, have you ever seen Amir al Mu'minin?
said he must be living a, a very luxurious life. He's the leader of the believers. You know, he doesn't even know what's happening out around his city. And Sayyidina Umar just kept quiet, kept on preparing food. After some time, his wife called from the tent, you know, congratulations, give your friend the good news that he has been given a son. So Sayyidina Umar prepared the food, fed him and said, go and feed your wife as well. And he said, you know, come tomorrow. I live in Medina, come to this, this place, I'll try to help you out. So next day he goes there, and he's, he sees what the Sayyid, he is, he's Amir al-Mu'mineen. He got shocked. This was the love, this was out of the love that they had for their Muslim fellow, fellow Muslims. Right? So when this Imani flavor comes in the life, then it's, it takes away all the filth that's in the heart. That's what it does. When the Iman gets into the life, into the heart, it takes away all the filth. If it's not taking away the filth, that means that the flat flavor isn't there. Something is missing. Okay. It, does, it makes a, a human being a perfect human being. It takes away all the hypocrisy from the heart of the people. It, it makes the intentions in the heart right. It makes the intentions in the heart right. And we know all the actions that we do are based on the intentions. <inaudible> the reward of every action is based on the intention. If the intention isn't, isn't right, and the place of the intention is the heart. If the intention isn't right, then it's, for, it's, it's, it's very problematic because there is no Imani flavor in the things that we do, in the life that we live. And the second thing that Prophet ﷺ said, that whoever gets angry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, And the beautiful example that we can give of that is Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Ali once he was in fight with one of the non-believers. And a time came that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu dominated him. And he was like, he had full control over that non-believer and he was about to kill him. And that person, he spit it on his face. In Sayyidina Ali's face, karramallahu anhu. May Allah make his face shine. And Sayyidina Ali, after he did that, he he let him he let him go. He just relieved released him. And that person got amazed. You know, you had all control over me. You could have killed me. What are you what did you do? He said, I was to kill you for the sake of Allah. Now that you have done this to me. Now I have that feeling of revenge within me as well. And I do not want to mix any of my feelings that were for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with my own personal feelings. So I, that's why I, I, let you, I let you go. My anger was for the sake of Allah. Now that anger is not solely for the sake of Allah alone. That's why I let you go. So, people can get angry with other people if you see, for example, somebody sinning. Somebody breaking the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody becoming disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when you can only get angry on that person. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he used to see people disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used to get angry. So much so that, that there was a vein that was between his eye, eyebrows, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People could see that, 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 uh, that vein uh, palpitating because of the anger that he used to have. Why? Because Allah's rules were, were, were demolished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rules were, were not followed. Right? And we see, we ourselves sin day and night. 
we ourselves disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night let alone that if we see other people I mean and, and any sort of anger can come in our heart for that those people and there is a very subtle difference between getting angry at the people who are sinning as compared to getting angry at those people themselves we do not get angry at the people if the same person who is sinning who is becoming disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he does tawbah from that sin if he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that sin right then all of that anger should instantly change to love if we feel that this anger is like that that's true anger for Allah but if that is for that person right as a personality that's not the anger for the sake of Allah right for example if 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 I go to a person who is who is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have this sort of I mean quote unquote anger not kind of anger but like I'm displeased with the fact that he's disobeying Allah and it goes to that person and tries to explain to that person you know my friend this is not good you're displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know and say he starts yelling back at me right he starts yelling back at me I feel I feel definitely feel bad about that that he's yelling back, back at me but say at the next moment he says you know by the way I realized what you said and I do tawbah to Allah now if you all the anger that you had or the bad feeling that you had in your heart if that is gone because he is in tawbah and you forget about all that yelling that he did like a minute ago that anger was for the sake of Allah but now you if you have that again in your heart you know this person also yelled at me I'm not going to forgive him even though he has repented he yelled at me how come he yelled at me right so now we can realize you know that this 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 anger that we had in our hearts was not for the sake of Allah alone that had some personal grudge that 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 was because of some personal grudge as well right so the imani flavor will only come if that anger is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right if we see people sinning that it should create some sort of like movement in our hearts why is this person doing that and people sin day and night and we take it as normal people don't pray and we don't even feel that you know they have done such a huge sin they've committed such a huge sin people go to movies people go to to people go drink people do all these sorts of things having mixed gatherings etc etc and if we don't even feel bad about all of that where is that anger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Again, not for that person, but because of the but but for that sin that's happening around. If that's not there, that means that our iman, that imani flavor doesn't have its 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 flavor in our lives. And the next thing that the Prophet said was Lillahi. Then when he gives, he gives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. There was a very pious person that comes in the books that once he was doing some sort of social work. And he gave, there was a poor person who came and he asked for help. And this person, he gave him some money or whatever help. And they were all sitting in a, in a gathering and this person stood up, who was a poor person who was helped here. He said, he stood up, he said, you know, this person, this pious person, he gave me some money so why don't you give me the money as well and this pious person he stood up he said you know what by the way you know when I gave you money I was supposed to ask my parents I didn't ask them so can you please give my money back and everybody started looking at him you know what what is he doing he gave him and he's now taking it back but anyway that poor person gave that money back to him and everybody thought bad about this person when everybody was gone, he, he called this poor person. He said, you know, come here. By the way, you know, I only wanted it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you stood up and told everybody that I gave this money to you, then, you know, everybody started feeling good about me. I didn't want that to happen. So this is your money back. 
You know, I don't want it. It's yours. I just want that every, nobody thinks good of me. Because I only want it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes happy with me. So this is the sort of giving for the sake of Allah. That's the Imani flavor. Right? And who withholds for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doesn't give out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's again giving for the helping out in something that's wrong. You don't help another person because you know that if you give this to the other person, he's going to be involved in sin. Right? For the sake of Allah alone. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an in his time when he was Amir al Mu'mineen, when he was a caliph, he had a lot of, somebody sent a lot of, uh, you know, perfumes, the bottle of perfumes. And he was to distribute that. And his wife said, let me help you out in distributing that. He said, no, I cannot, I, I don't want your help. She said, why? He said, you know, that because this belongs to people, and when you will be distributing, even if you don't put it on your hands, at least you will feel the smell of that. I don't even want that, you know, you smell those that perfume. That's the trust of the people. That's the amana of the people. Allah. She's not letting his wife even help it, help him out in distribution in the distribution of that perf those perfumes. That's withholding for the sake of Allah. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and he was the caliph. You know, he only used to take a very little stipend from the, from the Baytul Mal. And he thought that, you know, it's just enough that we, we can, we can live a, like a normal life. And his wife always wanted that she could prepare some sweet dish, some like, so that they can eat after their meal. But they didn't have enough money, so then you can think they, they only had enough money that they can they could cook like just a normal meal. So what she said, you know, I get this pocket money. See, she started saving a very little bit, and after a few days, when she saved a little bit, she said, you know, now that I have enough, I can go and buy some sweet things and I will cook for for Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And she cooked that, brought it to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr asked her, where did she, where did it come from? And she said, you know, I, I kept on saving this much and I kept saved it for this these many number of days and, and and I've been able to save all of that and that's why I'm cooking it. Saying the Booker said that means that what we get from Baytul Mal is more than what we want. He's even he, he, he reduced the stipend that he used to take by that much amount that his wife saved to, to, to buy to buy that sweet dish. Allah. This is withholding for the sake of Allah. And that's the ex the the pinnacle of righteousness, a pinnacle of taqwa, right? So all of this, the intellect cannot think about all of that. This is not intellectual. This is something that only comes with iman. This only comes with if we have this feeling that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants something from us. That we do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that our reward only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When that feeling comes in the life of the people, then they will have that Imani flavor in their life. The true Imani flavor. And this is the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from all of us. This is the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And when we take that path when we start putting that imani flavor in our life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors that person so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, ever let this person lose in his life. Neither in this life, nor in the next life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let this person fail. Ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْسَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْجِيَنَّهُ حَيَاتٌ طَيِّبًا That whoever does good deeds, either from men or women, and he's a believer, he says, I will grant him a pure life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then helps out. 
Sayyidina Umar ibn, uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz Rahmatullah alayhi was, people call him another Khulafa from the Khulafa al Rashidin. He was like uh, an image, a mirror image of the Khulafa al Rashidin. Right? He also never saved anything in his life. He was a Mirul Mu'mini, the king, so called, quote unquote, never saved anything in his life. And he had 12 sons. And at the time of his death, and everybody, all his brothers, all his relatives, all the other people, they used to tell him, you know, what did you do? You didn't even save anything for your sons. What are they going to do after you? What are they going to do after you? They're going to go and beg. They're going to go and work like poor laborers. They are the, they are the princes. They are the, they're the prince. What did you do? And Sayyidina Umar, Bin Abdul Aziz Rahmatullah Alayh At the time of his death He called all of his sons He said Oh my sons You know what did I do in my life I didn't save anything for you I did not save anything for you But you know that I taught you to live To, to, to live a pious life I made you hufas I made you ulama I taught you how to live a righteous life, how to become obedient slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Oh my sons, if you do what I taught you, then you will you will see in your lives that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you. And if I had left all of this money for you, and you had not and and, and you were not to live a pious life after me, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take everything away from you. And that and that's how he died. And the people said after the death of Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz alayhi, they said that all of these other people that were that were like all rich people who saved so much for their children, he said that this and they were all Umara. They're all from like quote unquote noble families and it, 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 the people said after him that they saw with their own eyes the, 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 the children of all of these people begging at the doors of the masjid begging at the doors of the masjid and they said that they saw themselves that all of his twelve sons because they were ulama, they were muftis, they were hufaz he said all of them were later on given the, 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 the highest posts in, 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 in the government Some was, somebody was made a qadi somebody was made an imam somebody was made this somebody was made that because of their righteousness their piousness because they were, of their knowledge they didn't do it for that sake but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored them and they said that all of them were the ones who were distributing money with their own hands and the people who didn't lead a pious life and they were so rich at one time they said that they saw with their own eyes that they were begging at the doors of the massage Allah Akbar so when this 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 imani flavor comes in our lives then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of us He is the one who is the protector of the righteous people Allah is the protector of the righteous people, the people of Iman. This is what we all need to do. What we all need to do is that we, be, we come out of that animalistic life, only thinking about what are we going to eat next, and where are we going to go tonight to eat, and where are we going to eat tomorrow, and what's next, and what kind of clothes are we going to wear in like in two months. Get out of that state, become human beings first of all start thinking about other people start like feeling good about other people you start using your intellect that's also a ni'mah, a blessing that Allah has given us and then put that imani flavor on top put that imani flavor on top live your life for the sake of Allah alone stay away from sins Lead a, a righteous life.
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of us. Not only in the, the next dunya, in the hereafter, but also in this in this world as well. And we will see with our own lives and with our own eyes, inshaAllah. But we have to take that step first. We have to make our hearts pure. We have to take out all the filth that's in our hearts. We have to start working on our hearts. And that's a struggle. That doesn't come overnight. That doesn't come overnight. You have to struggle. You have to work on it. There's a sunnah to do that. You have to you have to take a guide. You have to take a teacher. You have to start understanding the, 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 the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. You have to start putting that in your lives. It's a struggle. But it has to come. Because if you want to become a person of Iman that Allah loves, right, then we have to work on it. And then inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give, give us all of what we are looking for. There are two ways to get that. Either we start struggling and just forget about all the things that Allah has Allah wants from us, Awizu Billah. And then even if we get that there will be no barakah in that or we will have no sukoon in that, or that will be taken away at the end of the day. Or the other path is that, you know, we just take all the things that Allah gives us, all the commandments that He has given us, and His Prophet ﷺ has given us. Take that 100%, put it in our lives, right? And then see the results with our own eyes. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that tawfiq. Because nothing happens without the tawfiq of Allah. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين